Welcome to Speak English Podcast with your host, Georgiana. The podcast that will help you to speak English fluently with no grammar and no textbooks. Hi, everybody. I am Georgiana, your English teacher and founder of SpeakEnglishPodcast.com. My mission is to help you to speak English fluently. Today, let's learn some popular idioms in English. And with a point of view lesson, you will learn grammar in context without memorizing any boring rules. I'll tell you the same story from different grammar points. I can change the tense or the person. And like that, you will learn grammar in context. Please visit speakenglishpodcast.com slash podcast to get the transcript. It's free. Okay, let's get started. Number one, no-brainer. This is basically an easy decision. It's something that requires little or no mental effort. For example, do you think I should propose to my girlfriend? That's a no-brainer. She is such a fantastic woman. Number two, sit on the fence. To sit on the fence means staying neutral and not taking sides. For example, if you have two friends and they have a fight, you will try not to take sides. You'll sit on the fence. Example. Don't you think I'm right? He hasn't been nice to me lately, has he? I am sitting on the fence with this one. You're both my good friends. Number three. To freak out. To freak out means to become very angry, scared, or excited. Example. Mom. Don't freak out, but I have to tell you something that I did last weekend. Tom and I got married. Last week, my sister won the lottery, and she freaked out about it. Number four, be a catch. To be a catch is telling someone that others would be lucky to have them around or even marry them. Example, Dad, I'm taking Jessica out tonight. She is such a catch. Number five, costs an arm and a leg. When something is very expensive, we say that it costs an arm and a leg. For example, my son wants a new computer for his birthday but it'll cost me an arm and a leg. This new smartphone costs me an arm and a leg. Number six, you rock. It means that you are great. For example, I can't believe you got the tickets for today's game. You rock. That's all for now. Let's practice these expressions in the next section. By the way, if you want to know how to speak English using the right techniques, visit speakenglishpodcast.com and subscribe to my mailing list. I will send you my five golden rules to speak English fluently. And it's completely free. Now, let's learn some English grammar in context with a point-of-view lesson. How does a point-of-view lesson work? I will tell you a short story more than one time. Every time, I'll change a grammar point. I can change the tense or the person. This way, you will notice the changes in context. Let's start. On our way to the supermarket, my husband and I stopped in front of a lottery booth. I love playing the lottery. It's a no-brainer for me to buy one ticket a week. Someone has to win. Besides, it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. 
it's only a few dollars. My husband, however, is indifferent to it. Let's say he sits on the fence for this sort of thing. He doesn't care. I take the opportunity to buy a ticket, even though my husband tells me that we're throwing away money. Then we head to the supermarket, do the shopping, and go home. During dinner, I turn on the television. They are reporting on the lottery. They call out the winning number. I pull out my ticket, and it's the same number. We both jump for joy and freak out. In a burst of emotion, my husband says, I love you. You rock. And I tell him while winking at him. I'm a real catch, huh? Let's hear the same story, but from the husband's point of view. On our way to the supermarket, my wife and I stop in front of a lottery booth. She loves to play the lottery. For her, it's a no-brainer to buy one ticket a week. Someone has to win. Besides, it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. It's only a few dollars. However, I'm indifferent. Let's just say I sit on the fence for this sort of thing. I don't care. So my wife takes the opportunity to buy a ticket, even though I tell her we are throwing money away. Then we head to the supermarket, do the shopping, and go home. During dinner, I turn on the TV. They are reporting on the lottery. They call out the winning number. So my wife pulls out the ticket, and it's the same number. We both jump for joy, and we are freaking out. In a burst of emotion, I tell my wife, I love you, you rock. And she replies, winking at me, I'm a real catch, huh? Let's hear one more time the story, but from a friend's point of view. On the way to the supermarket, my friend and her husband stopped in front of a lottery booth. She loves playing the lottery. For her, it's a no-brainer to buy one ticket a week. Someone has to win. Besides, it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. It's only a few dollars. Her husband, however, is indifferent. Let's just say he sits on the fence for this sort of thing. He doesn't care. So my friend takes the opportunity to buy a ticket. Even though her husband tells her that they are throwing money away. Then they head to the supermarket, do the shopping, and go home. During dinner, they turn on the television. They are reporting on the lottery. They call out the winning number. So my friend pulls out the ticket, and it's the same number. They both jump for joy and freak out. Her husband says to my friend, I love you. You rock, in a burst of emotion. And she replies, winking at him, I'm a real catch, huh? Okay, it's the end of this short lesson. As you can see, just by changing the point of view of the story, you can learn grammar in context. It is one of the techniques that I use in my premium courses. I recommend you to take a look at speakenglishpodcast.com slash courses. Okay, we have reached the end of this episode. Remember to listen to it several times. It will help you with your English. See you soon. Bye-bye. Did you enjoy today's episode? Get the transcript now at speakenglishpodcast.com.